What is going on, party people, here at reInvent 2023 here in Las Vegas, Nevada? I am here with some exciting friends because I love security. They do security. And go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell the crowd who you are. And let's go ahead and talk about what you are announcing today. Hey, everyone. My name is Sujay Doshi. I'm the Senior Product Manager with Guard Duty. Hi, and I'm Spiros Titonis. I'm a senior uh, PM for the Amazon ECS service. Awesome. So if you were at a family dinner and you were going to describe guard duty and ECS, how would you describe those for those that are not familiar with guard duty and ECS? Sure. So, so guard duty is, uh, think about it as something that will protect what you are running in your cloud. So in cloud, you are running so many different services. It's a threat detection service which continuously monitors your accounts, your assets, your entities, and then it establishes a normal baseline and uses ML to detect uh, threat indicators. Awesome, and then what about ECS? Yeah, so we already use Guard Duty to do things like VPC flow logs, DNS query logs, do cloud trace uh, uh, tra uh, tracing. Um, and this adds the runtime monitoring because in any compute workload, you can have these vulnerabilities show up in the customer software. So we assist in the shared responsibility model in the sense that we protect the, the infrastructure that runs in the cloud uh, uh, with this additional capability. Awesome. So what exactly is runtime monitoring? So runtime, runtime threat detection in general uh, spans around the fact that we are monitoring in the container space. We are monitoring all the process executions, all the network connections, all the file access behavior that essentially allows you to know if in, in case there is a compromise, what really is happening in that container runtime space. When, that is when a container is executing. And that's where this runtime threat detection uh, as a space uh, is prevalent. And you know this launch helps do that. Awesome. So you're with ECS, you're with Guard Duty. So I have a fun feeling that there's something new with Guard Duty going on. And that is ECS runtime monitoring. Yes, and ECS, uh, actually, you can deploy on different kinds of compute. So we can do it on managed EC2 instances. And we also run it on serverless mode using Fargate. Ooh. And the nice thing about this uh, feature is we're able to onboard a, a guard duty runtime monitoring agent that monitors both the operating system resources as well as all the customers' uh, containers and applications running in containers mm -hmm. and all the tasks in EC2. You can do that by installing that agent in the instance itself. So you monitor okay. all the resources in the instance. Whereas with Fargate, you install that on the task space itself. So it only monitors that all your containers and applications inside that task. So not only can they monitor uh, ECS on EC2, where you have a uh, little bit more control of the underlying infrastructure, but with right. Fargate, which is more managed, you're able to scale these fairly easily, which is very important when it comes to you know the observability and yes, endpoint detection absolutely. space, and I, right? And it's it's all that managed nature which makes it more lovable. So as Spiros mentioned, really for an ECS customer, if when they are defining their tasks, at the time if they have this ECS runtime monitoring enabled, uh, every time a task runs, the system automatically kind of injects this. Uh, uh, container that basically starts collect, which is the agent that starts collecting yeah. the telemetry and does the threat detection on the back end. I believe the 1990s term was called bootstrapping, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you have a demo for us to see this in action, and I, sure. I want to give you plenty of time to see this in action for the audience, for myself, because I'm very excited to hear mm -hmm. about this today. Yeah. So let's go ahead, and with the power of magic, we're going to go ahead and put your screen on. There it is. All right. All right, so what do we got going on here? So we are on this uh, ECS console. So we'll first start with the, uh, let's say, in a, in, a, in a particular deployment, in a prod, we have two clusters, prod and dev. In prod clusters, we'll basically show there are certain tasks which essentially defines on you know, what, what a particular, uh, what are the different applications that's running. So if you go into one of the tasks, uh, and let's look at the task definition, right? So this really, the purpose of showing this is essentially how easy is it to do crypto mining uh, in a container that's running on Fargate? Why are we showing people that? <laughs> right, so, that, so let's start with that. Let, that, that, that that's something, that's something uh, you know, I want, I, I want to kind of, you know, make sure that we understand, right? So it's, that, it, it's this easy. Right. Now, with God Duty ECS runtime monitoring, so here, let's do one thing. We'll actually create We'll run this task. Uh, we'll run this on ECS cluster. And for those not familiar with ECS, yeah. a task is essentially how you're going to provision a container environment. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, and here we'll select 
this particular task to run on Fargate. Okay. Right. So that's all. I provided all provided all the information. Now Fargate is where AWS is responsible for the underlying infrastructure, and you're more so just focusing on the container configuration and the application and logic. Okay. Right. So you're you're just focused on kind of building your applications, not really managing the underlying cool. infrastructure. AWS does that for you. Wonderful. Right. So now this is the task that we. Uh, uh, that, that we started, and, and as you can see, automatically, with a container that we had, there is a guard duty agent that's automatically injected. So How did that get there? And that's where, so we have... It's the power of magic. That's the power of <laughs> magic, yeah. You know, and I, I apologize, we didn't do the demo dance, but so far the demo dance <laughs> has not been needed for today's demo. The demo so guards have been great. Yes, they have, yeah. been, uh, they have been gracing us with their presence today. Right. So as you saw, right, uh, the simplicity is in the management as well as the operationalization of this, right? So we didn't change any task definition. Okay. Automatically, we just ran the task and the system injected. Uh, and that is because it's on Fargate. So with exactly. Fargate, you're not modifying the task definition. Nothing. You're just saying, hey, do the thing. Yeah. And then Fargate's going to be like, I'll this do is, it too. This is something our uh, early adapters of this feature are really, really excited about. Right. Because... Yeah you no longer have to do update and maintenance and uh, patches or anything like that. We do all that in the image for this agent, and it's automatically pulled. Every time you create a new task or any new service deployment that includes tasks, we pull the latest from repo. Right. So then, you never have to touch it. In fact, we designed this to have two different personas in mind. The right. security administrator, which is usually a different group that activates right. the feature, and the ECS operator. So those that are responsible for, you know, endpoint security, container security, they're probably just going, Whew, we don't have to modify our existing environment because we can... It's a one-click experience. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll see that for the security administrator, this is when we'll go into the guard duty console. Okay. We'll see on how simple is it to kind of ensure that there is holistic coverage across the organization for different accounts that's there. And, but on the ECS, we were basically showing the, the ECS operator persona for them, it's business as usual about running the task, setting things up, and the task definitions, and don't change anything. For them, they're not worried on how are, how how is this going to get secured, because the security administrator already have set this up. So. Don't worry, developers. Security is not stifling innovation here. They're making it easier for you. Exactly. Mm. All right. So 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 here is where we basically have the setup. Uh, I mean, technically, we didn't do any setup uh, on the console. I was going to say, what setup? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? We just, it, it, it shows that when you run a task, it auto-injects auto uh, a guard duty. So let's come to the guard duty console. This is where you have the list of different findings. Before I, before, before we show into kind of, you know, that specific feature, let's actually look at one particular finding, right? So I will filter it by the not, resource type. Not to alarm you, but you have a lot of findings going on here. <laughs> that's what you know. You, that's what you need in a demo. <laughs> the breadth and the depth. All right. So let's look at uh, some guard duty findings. So here I'm looking at uh, a finding which indicates that there is an EC2 instance that's communicating outbound to Bitcoin mining pool. Okay. Uh, and this is based on the foundational sources that Guard Duty automatically monitors every time you enable Guard Duty. Yeah, so and that's, the that's CloudTrail VPC flow logs. And DNS query route, logs. Route 53 resolver right. logs, and then there's that's also it. a myriad. And, and then, then the, there's a myriad of different, what we call as opt-in protection plans. Runtime monitoring is one of it. Okay. And the way at this launch, so we already have EKS runtime monitoring, we launched ECS runtime monitoring, and we have an EC2 runtime monitoring in preview. The idea is that we are basically across different computes that you have. Using guard duty, you can do runtime threat detection uh, in a uniform fashion. Wonderful. Right? So so, so, the, so in this case, right, the finding that we are looking at, uh, which, which, which is, again, using the VPC flow logs, as you can see, uh, amongst the other meta information, here we see it's communicating to uh, an XM rig uh, mining pool. Naughty, naughty. But there's no information on what the task is uh, or really what the container is. We can we can tell from the tags that there is an ECS cluster that's running on this instance. Right. But but again, nothing beyond that, right? Yeah. So to the end user, they really don't know what the source of infection is, and that's not that's that. That, that's by design, right? I mean, VPC flow logs will be abstracted at the level of EC2 without knowing on what really is running, right? 
So now enter runtime monitoring. So now we'll look at the same thing. Um, so let's look at the same detection logic that we have for VPC flow logs. It also applies to the network events that we collect from the uh, uh, from the security agent. And here, if I click click on this finding, as you can see on the same broad ECS cluster where we ran uh, the task, and the task basically was uh, running the uh, crypto miner. As you can see, it has all the information in terms of what the task details, what what the task detail, what's the container that's running, uh, the domain. As you can see, the same one. What's the process? Actually, that's responsible oh, wow. for uh, you know this suspicious network and communication And what it's outcome. running as as well. Absolutely, and it also has a lineage that basically allows you or shows you up until five levels of what's the calling process of the execution of the process that's tagged as suspicious. So, this is the contextual information that gets added. Uh, so now you know it's actually the container that's the source of infection and not really the entire EC2 instance that needs to be decommissioned, right? And I, I feel like a container environment is really good to isolate what the actual root cause is instead of Absolutely. just saying the whole EC2 instance is exposed. Um, Correct. Because and that could impact right. a lot of other containers right. too. Right, and, and you don't need disparate solutions, right? It's all now available in guard duty. And for any other, for, for, for people who are already using guard duty, it's business as usual in terms of consuming the data because it's a different. It's 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 as simple as a different finding, like any other finding that they are used yeah. to consuming. So all the downstream operating procedures, they they remain the same. But you do you do need to opt in to enable okay. ECS runtime so, monitoring. So th that's a good segue. So let's not, let's talk about the setup and the enablement, right? So for a security administrator, which we call as delegated administrator in guard duty, uh, the way you set this up is again that's. We have tried to simplify that uh, like every other thing that we do. So you, if you click on runtime monitoring on the left panel and you click on the edit, it basically allows you to have an organization-wide coverage for an existing account or all your accounts where you are running, let's say, ECS workloads. Uh, in addition to that, there is agent management, which is automatic, which is automated, right? So there's no operations overhead that you need to manage, and especially as peers, you can uh, you can add here that yep. the tasks that are you know five minutes, seven minutes, <laughs> ten minutes, right? It, it's operationally yeah. challenging, right? So yeah, because of the immutability constraint we have, what's going to happen is you're not going to be running and using the the guard duty agent until a task is redeployed, right? Okay. So that way you don't interrupt the current existing uh, uh, application running. The additional thing we did here, uh, on top of the automated guard duty agent deployment, we also created the capability because once you do that one click, all your clusters in the account get it. Right. <laughs> okay. So maybe you don't want that, right. right? Maybe you're an ECS operator and you, there's some non-business critical or other other types of clusters you don't want to monitor necessarily. So we actually created a way for the ECS operator to opt out, or if you don't choose automated uh, uh, management, you have an option to also opt in to a cer certain cluster. So you can either do all and subtract, or you can do one at a time. Right. And that gives you that kind that's of granularity at the cluster level. Right. Because that's some early feedback we got also from the EKS Absolutely. deployment. Customers are really, really weary about trying to do blast. Uh, Correct. And especially off. for production right. workloads yeah. that you can imagine, right? They want to test out the feature. They love it. But they do not want to kind of do a big bang uh, to all their accounts or the, all their clusters. Right. So really, cluster level configurability helps them to slow walk ensure that you know it's not impacting their actual business from a performance standpoint and also helps them manage the costs and get get visibility into it rather than just getting a big bill that they didn't expect See, so I, I feel like that's very important that you call that out because you are able to slowly adopt this into your absolutely. environment instead of just like click yeah there it is and I think because a lot of our customers they actually have three different tiers of environments they have a development environment where CI/CD uh, workflows go in. They have a QA or staging environment, and then they have a production environment. And if you don't, you should. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's the idea. The idea is whoever is staging the application is the one that's doing things like security, right. logging, tracing. They're the ones, not the developers. We probably might not even want to run it for developers. But at, at that point, you start staging it, and definitely for production, you want to have it.
Right. So we have a finding. We've enabled ECS uh, runtime monitoring. What can we do to like investigate that even further? Yeah. So if, as part of the investigation, so one part you mentioned is the findings, but then uh, there's also the concept of, you know, in a cluster, if let's say there's some permissions that went, you know, cluster operator did something and the permissions doesn't work, right? So in that case, we also don't want to be blindsided with the fact that I have runtime monitoring enabled, and but that's pretty much it. And there's where the coverage investigation kind of comes into play, right? In which we allow you to give you, we give you a coverage summary in terms of what, what clusters do you have deployed, where all do you have this particular agent running, then do you have any issues, and it will give information around if there is an issue that needs to be actioned upon. Okay. So that's the coverage summary, and you know it gives a health status of you know what are the healthy clusters, non-healthy clusters, so on and so forth. And again, all of this, as you can see, you, you, you have uniformity in different workloads that you would have for EKS, ECS, EC2, all from the same panel. Now, going back to the findings, right? So let's say that there is a finding and the customer wants to provide a feedback. So either they can say that, you know, this was useful or it was not useful, or if they want to investigate with detective, just clicking on, you know, investigate with detective, it will take them to the detective console, wherein in the security graph, it will basically load this information and they get, get further context. You know, this is an uh, awesome feature and a great addition to Guard Duty. For those that are here at reInvent or even watching, you know, virtually, how can someone you know, be able to ask questions or experience it hands-on here at reInvent or at their, their home? So we have a, um, a booth demo right. over on booth 1390, the modern apps zone. Awesome. At 3 p.m. Yeah. So we can, we'll be there to help answer any questions. Sure. Uh, there's another session on, on Thursday at 11.30, uh, Con 325, where we're going to be discussing this more from the ECS operator point of view. You can also watch uh, on YouTube, we recorded another session yesterday, right. Security 239, which shows the security administrator point of view. Um, you can go online. There's a, all our documentation is updated. And right. I believe and also I'll, I'll, I'll be hanging around at the security identity and compliance booth. Yeah. So just it's say an hi. awesome booth. I promise you. Yeah. Say hi. Hey, if anything. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Stay tuned. We've got some more awesome content at reInvent 2023 here in Las Vegas.